Yarn New Master from Yarna, 80% merino wool, 20 acrylic, 125 meters in 50 grams, recommended needles 4, 4.5, color of the yarn 9467, fresh grass or green grass, interchangeable knitting needles 4.5 millimeters and few cords to them, hook 2.5 millimeters, ruler and measuring tape, needle and some markers. I think that it's important to make gauge swatches to have an accurate measurements and to cast on needed amount of loops. Basically, it helps you to find out how many loops you have in one centimeter and how many rows you have in one centimeter needed. After you wash and dry your needing product, it might change the size and shape. My gauge swatch for garter stitch pattern with twisted loops has 22 loops and 11 rows. This pattern is my main pattern, which I'm gonna use for all measurements and calculations. Before washing, it was 9 by 3 cm, and after that it changed the size just a little bit by 3 mm. So in 1 cm I have 2.52 loops, and 3.66 rows. Gauge swatch with strawberry pattern didn't change the size at all. Because I'm knitting Vicola strap cardigan, I have to start my knitting with knitting actual strap. To find out the length of my strap, I measured my neckline from one clavicle to another one. In my case, it is 30 centimeters. So it means that I have to knit a strap which is gonna be 30 centimeters long. In your case, this number might be different depending on the size you need. I decided to make my strap 6 cm wide. You can choose different number if you'd like. With the measurements I made and calculations I did, I now know that I have to cast on 15 loops and need 110 rows, which is gonna be equal 6 cm wide and 30 cm long. To begin my strap, I'm gonna cast on 15 loops. I'm gonna slip the first stitch and I'm gonna do it in every row in my strap. All other loops I'm gonna knit by the back leg. And every last loop in every row I'm gonna purl. I will continue with this pattern until I have 110 rows done. I finished my 110 rows, but I see that it's not quite 30 centimeters. And keeping in mind that my yarn shrinks a little, I'm gonna add two more rows. With additional two rows, I have comfortable 30 centimeters. And now it's time to pick up our loops on this side and here. On the length of 112 rows, I have 56 stitches, and it means that I have to pick up their 56 loops. Also, I already have 15 loops on my needle, and I'm gonna add one more loop on the edge for the round edge. On 30 centimeters, I'm gonna pick up 56 loops. Also, I'm gonna add another loop for the round edge on the other side, and I will pick up 15 loops on the other side. So overall, I have to cast on for the main part 88 loops. Let me show how we're gonna be picking up our loops. So first of all, we'll consider that we continue knitting this row and this already our loops on this side and all around till here. We want our knitting, our finished cardigan to look like it has all around uh, this garter stitch. So that's why we'll assume that we need in every stitch here. To make our edges more round, we'll be adding one more, uh, one more loop right here. But before that, let's take a look at our last loop. Usually we were purling it, but right now we, we're gonna just guard the stitch it because we continue our row. We continue knitting guard the stitch pattern even though on this side we don't have a loops, but we'll continue. Let me show you what I mean. So usually I were purling my last stitch like that. 
but right now I'm just gonna do it I'm just gonna need it as usual guard stitch now for the round edge here I'm gonna add one more loop and now I'm gonna treat every stitch that I have here as actual loop and I'm gonna need guard stitch in that first way that you can do it is you can just actually pick it up and knit it like that so that's exactly how we form first loop you can also use a hook to do that if you wanted to do with a hook just do it like that and pick up a loop make sure though that your yarn is not twisted and it's the same all the way around because when you're gonna start knitting next row you'll see the difference how you hold your yarn and I'm taking both loops so I'm done with this side and I have 56 loops here so now I'm gonna do the same as I did on the other corner I'm just gonna add one more loop to make our edges more round and I have to finish I have to pick up 15 loops on this side I'm gonna go in every loop and now I actually need a hook I think it's twisted so I'm just gonna change it yeah now it's better Just making sure my loops are not twisted so now i picked up all the loops i need i have 88 loops all around and it's including 16 loops that i have in front it means like 15 that i already have plus uh, one loop for on each side that i added for the round the edge and 56 loops that i picked up here on 30 centimeters on my uh, 112 rows right now i'm on the wrong side of the work and i have to need the first row but before that let's play markers on our reglan lines let's take a look at the diagram before placing our markers for the gland lines so overall we have 88 loops for the front back and two sleeves we know that in front we have two straps which are 16 loops each and it leaves us with 32 loops for the front we'll have 40 gland lines which can be two loops each and that's another eight loops so for the back and for the sleeves we'll have 48 loops left then we'll use a formula we'll divide 48 loops by five parts we'll have 9.6 and we'll round it up to 10 loops this formula tells us to give three parts for the back and two parts for the sleeve so we'll have 10 loops for each sleeve and we'll have 28 loops for the back this time i'm gonna try to use my bobby pins as my markers i'll be attaching it on the wrong side of the work so it's not gonna create also unnecessary holes on the knitting so first pair gonna be after 16 uh, loops from the start from here so i'm gonna count 16 loops from this side and i'm gonna place my marker and here as well and on the other side the same next pair of markers i'm gonna place right beside two loops that i have here on this side and on this side as well that's gonna be our reglan line first on this side and first on this one this is gonna be our front reglan lines My next pair of marker gonna go after 10 loops on one side and on the other one. That's gonna be our sleeves. One side.
on the other side. And I'm gonna finish my reclined lines in the back. That's gonna be our back reclined lines. And I'm gonna place those markers after two loops on each side. So now our markers for a gland line are in places and we can knit the first row. First row after casting on loops will be knitting on the wrong side of our work. We'll follow the sequence that is shown on the screen. We're not gonna do any increases in this row. We'll be making increases only on the right side of our work. Start point for this row is shown on the left side of our diagram and end point on the right. So this is our first row after casting on and first loop we're not gonna need in every row so we're just gonna take it on our working needle and next 14 stitches we'll need in garter stitch. So 14 stitches are done plus the one that we just took and next stitch I want the pearl because I want to divide somehow my strap that I have here, I want to divide it from the rest of the knitting. Because of the way we started our casting on, I have my short end of the uh, yarn here on this side and it's going to be just really easy to hide it. And you can see on the right side that we cannot notice that it was uh, just casting on from other side. It goes all the way as it was garter stitch pattern on the other side. Next two loops is our reglan line and I want it to also be a little bit different from the other patterns that I have and not twisted. So I want to purl them. But before that I'm just gonna twist those loops to avoid holes and I'm gonna purl them. This one again, I'm just going to twist it like that and I'm going to pull it. And on the right side of the work, I'm going to be just knitting it. So it's going to be a little bit visible. Also because it's right wrong side of the work, I'm not going to do any increases on this side. Next loops, I'm just going to continue and guard the stitch. My next two loops are a gland line and I have to purl them. But before that, I'm just gonna twist those loops to avoid holes and I'm gonna purl them. This one again, I'm just gonna twist it like that and I'm gonna purl it. In this way, it's gonna be more tight and it's not gonna make any holes. After that, I'm gonna continue knitting 28 loops before my next markers. For this reglan line, I'm gonna do the same. I'm gonna purl these two loops, but I'm gonna twist my loops first. Like that. And I'm gonna twist this loop as well. Now I'm going to continue with knitting 10 stitches for the sleeves in a garter stitch. Next to stitches, our uh, reglan line, we're also going to switch like that and purl. Next loop, which is 16 loop from the beginning, we're going to purl as well. And the rest of 15 loops I'm going to do in a garter stitch, except the last one that I'm going to purl. So this last loop, which is 15th loop, I'm going to purl. That's how our first row looks like. And you can see that on this side it looks exactly the same as the other rows, so you can not see that there was casting on of stitches. And now I'm gonna switch my markers to the level up.
So I switched my markers to the next level. Now we're gonna take a look at our diagram just to see where we have uh, to put our markers to make a short rose. I want to need short rose because it's gonna help me with shaping the neck and shaping shoulders and it's gonna look much better than without it. Overall, we'll have 10 uh, short rows. Four of them gonna be for the shoulders and six gonna be for making the neckline. After we take a look at our diagram, I'm gonna show you on my actual knitting where I'm gonna put my markers. Front 32 loops as well as full loops of front red line lines are not gonna be included in our short rows. We'll have five turning points on each sleeve and two turning points on each shoulder. So overall in the back we'll have four turning points. Half of the loops that we have on the sleeves, it's five loops, are not gonna be included in short rows as well. Between other turning points on the sleeves we'll have one loop. To find out how many loops we should have for our shoulders, we'll divide the number of loops that we have in the back by two. We'll get 14 because we have 28 loops in the back. Middle 14 loops gonna be our neckline and the they are not going to be included in our short rows as well. And other 14 loops, that the loops for our shoulders. So it means that we have four loops for each shoulder. Between two turning points on the back for our shoulders, we'll leave four loops. And between one turning point and reglan line in the back, we'll leave three loops. First pair of markers for first turning points I'm gonna go on our shoulders. We're gonna count five loops on one side. I'm gonna place a marker and on the other side as well. Five loops and a marker. So this is five. We'll do the same on the other side. So five loops. Second turning points. It will go right after one loop and we count it from the first turning point. And we'll do the same on the other side. This is our first turning point. And this is our second turning point. Third turning point. So we already have two here. We'll add one more loop. And here we're gonna place our third turning point. Same we'll do on the other side. One loop goes here. And right in this space goes our next turning point. Turning point number four. One more loop. And it goes like that. So now we have four of them. One, two, three, four. On this side as well. So we have four now. And what's left just to place fifth marker right here after next loop in one, two loops here. And that's going to be our fifth turning point. This is our reglan line and here we have our five turning points. Five loops first, first turning point, one loop second, one loop third, one loop fourth and one loop fifth. And here goes our fifth turning point. That's we have for the sleeves, five turning points. Now we have to Put two turning points on each shoulder on the back. This is our reglan line for the back, this one as well. So we'll count three loops from this marker right here from our reglan line. And we'll place our marker right here. On the other shoulder, also our reglan line right here, we'll count three loops and we'll place our marker right beside it. Next pair I'm gonna go after four loops. So we're gonna count four loops and the marker goes right here. We have first marker placed after three loops and second after four. Other side gonna be the same. First marker after three loops, second after four. So now all of our markers are in places and we can start knitting. While we knit, we have to add the increases to our reglan lines. We'll be adding two increases on each side. Also, we'll be taking off our markers for turning points once we get to them. 
so we're not going to have as many markers as we have right now at the end you'll have only four reclaimed lines first i'm going to show you on diagram how we're going to need those rows and after that i'm going to show you an actual knitting what i'm going to be doing we'll start knitting our short rows on the right side of our work in every row that we need on the right side of our work we'll be doing increases besides our reglan lines our start point is on the right side of our diagram and we'll be knitting till our first turning point which is on the left hand side when we'll turn our work we'll be knitting on the wrong side of our work till the first turning point on the opposite side. Then again we'll turn our work and we'll be knitting to the second point on the opposite side. After we turn our work again, we'll be knitting to the second turning point on the opposite side and again turn our work and knit till the next turning point. We'll continue till we have six rows done for our neckline and now as you can see we have already six rows on our diagram so that's going to be the point where we're going to start knitting short rows for our shoulders and from that point we'll be knitting until our first turning point on our shoulder we'll turn our work and we'll knit till our first turning point on the sleeve from that point we'll knit to our second turning point on the shoulder and we'll go back till our last turning point on the sleeve. Now one side of our work is done and we have to knit till our turning point on the sleeve on the opposite side and finish four rows for the shoulders. So from this point on the diagram we have to knit four rows and we'll be knitting them exactly in the same way as we knitted on the first side. So from the first turning point on the sleeve we'll knit till our first turning point on the shoulder. We'll go back and we'll finish our next short row from that point when we reach our second turning point on the shoulder we'll finish our row by just finishing it till the very end right now on the diagram you see all 10 rows and that was a preview of how we're going to be knitting our 10 rows on the knitting now so we're going to make a first short row we'll be making increases besides our reglan line and we'll make this short row till our first turning point which is right here it's on the sleeve and it's five loops right before our reglan line for the front first loop we're not going to need we're just going to slide it to our working needle next 14 uh, stitches next 14 loops i'm gonna need in part a stitch next loop which is loop number 16 from our beginning i'm gonna need on this side and i will be purling it on the opposite side that's how i'm gonna divide our strap from the rest of the knit we have two loops of our reglan line and we have to make an increase so to make an increase I'm going to grab this yarn right here and I'm going to place it on my left needle in this way. Now I have to knit it. So I'm going inside. I'm going inside my loop, taking the yarn and pulling it through. So in this way, I just have twisted loop, which is going to help me to eliminate this space here and I'm gonna make a big hole and now I'm just gonna need these two loops it's our reglan line now I have to make another increase I'm gonna make make a left increase so I'm gonna place my yarn in this way I'm gonna go inside and I'm gonna grab my yarn and put it like that that's gonna be make the left increase now I'm gonna continue in knitting this five loops my next marker I have these markers here but I'm not gonna take them right now I'm just gonna continue knitting so now I'm besides again my reglan line next reglan line and now I have to make an increase again I'm just gonna place my yarn that I took from previous round in this way and I'm gonna knit it so it's gonna be a make the right increase Increase is done. Now I'm gonna need two loops that are my reglan line. 
I'm gonna take this yarn, it's yarn from previous round, I'm gonna place it like that. And I'm gonna use this way. That's gonna be make the left increase. And I'm gonna knit till my next reglan line on the back right here. Now I'm at my reglan line and I have to make an increase. So I'm gonna take this yarn, place it on the left needle. It's a little tight. So one inside, grabbing the yarn and pulling through. I'm gonna need the next two loops, which are my reglan line. And I'm gonna make another increase. So I'm going to take this yarn that is right here. I'm going to place it on the left needle. And I'm going to need it like that. And I will continue my row till this point right here, till my marker. It's my first turning point. I have exactly five loops till my reglan line. That's exactly where I want to be, my turning point. I'm going to take off this marker. I don't need it anymore. Now on this side, I have four turning points left and I'm gonna turn my work on the other side. This is my wrong side of the work and I'm starting second short row. Before that, I'm just gonna take this loop, which I have to need, but I'm not gonna need it. So I placed it on my working needle and I just tied it like that. It's still one loop, it's just really tight. And I'm gonna leave my marker here because I still need it. This is my fourth turning point that I'm not gonna take yet. I already took one and it was fifth turning point right here. I will continue knitting till my next turning point, which is gonna be right here on this side. And it's gonna be turning point number five on the other sleeve. I'm not gonna do any increases because this is my wrong side of the work and I'm gonna make sure I'm gonna need increasers that I already did uh, on the right side on my first short row. Make sure that this one is tight here and knit as regular everything else. So now I reached my fifth marker on the other side and this is my next turning point. I have here six loops left till my next reglan line. That's exactly what it's supposed to be because I did one increase and I have five loops that I left. So now I can just take off this marker and turn my work. Second short row is done. So we can start row number three which we're gonna need till our next turning point on the other sleeve. This turning point is right here. It's our second marker. So we'll have right now four markers. One we already took off and this is the next one that we have to take off. And in this row we have to make increasers. But first let's make our turning point. So I'm not gonna need this loop. I'm just gonna take it to other needle and I'm gonna twist it. I'm gonna twist it like that so we'll see two loops. It's actually one loop but we're just gonna see it like that. So I finished my row, row number three. I'm taking my marker off. I don't need it anymore. And we already have our first uh, turning point right here. So this is gonna be our second turning point. Now we're turning our work. So this is row number four and it's our wrong side of the work. We're not gonna do any increases here and we'll just need everything as the pattern says us. First loop I'm not gonna need. So I'm taking this loop and I'm just gonna twist it like that. Later I'm gonna show you how we're gonna need them. I will continue knitting till my next marker that is on the other side on the sleeve. It's gonna be this marker and it's just besides our turning point that we already did. And our last stitch, so now we can take our marker off. And now we can turn our work. And this is row number five and we have to knit till this point. We have right now on the other side three turning points, so we have to knit to the one that is furthest. This is my front side and here I'm just gonna make all the increases I need besides our reglan line. And I need it till my marker here. That's gonna be marker number three. And I'm gonna just take it off. And now I can turn my knitting on the other side. Row number six. And I'm gonna knit this row till this point right here. 
on the other side in my marker number three. This is wrong side of the work, so I don't need to make increases. I'm just gonna need as parent says me. With row number seven, so with short row number seven, we're gonna start making shoulder lines. So right now we are here. From here, I'm gonna need to the first point on my shoulder here. It's gonna be really short row. It's right side of the work. I'm gonna add increases as well. Next row, we'll need till this marker. This is our marker number four. We have right now two markers left on our sleeve and we'll need to this one. That was row number eight. Now we're gonna need row number nine. It's gonna be also our shoulder short row. We're gonna need till this point one marker that it's left on our shoulder. Because it's right side of the work, we'll add increasers besides our reglan line. And now we reached our turning point on the shoulder that we just did in the last row. And I'm gonna show you that we'll need it the same way as I'm doing my twisted loops. So, and we reached our marker for the shoulder line. Just gonna take it off and we'll turn our work. And we have to need a one more row and it's gonna be row number 10 and it's gonna be last row that we have. And we'll need to this point till the marker that we have only one marker that we have on the sleeve. We don't need to make any increases because it's wrong side of our work. So now we have all the 10 rows on this side here, but we have to complete four more rows on this side because we already did six here and we have to complete four more for the, for the shoulder lines. From this point, we're gonna need to our sleeve marker on this side. So we'll start here and we'll finish here. So next rows that we're gonna make, we're gonna make from this marker to this one, to the closest to us. That's how we're gonna be making our shoulder line. We need it from here till this point. We're not doing any increases on the wrong side of the work. Next short row, we're gonna need from this point to the marker that is left on our sleeve. And we'll make increases here. Now from this our turning point, we'll need them to our last marker that left on the shoulder till here. Continue with the pattern and we're not making increases on this uh, side because this is the wrong side. This was the last really short row and we have to finish all the way to the end our row. So what we're gonna do, we're just gonna turn our work and we'll finish our last short row. But this time we're gonna need to till the very end. So we're not needing our first loop here. We're taking it on the other needle and tighten it. It has two loops, but it's technically one loop. And we'll continue knitting till the very end, right here, till the very end of the row, following the pattern and adding increases because this is the right side of our work. This is right side of the work and we have right now these bumpy loops and all of them we're gonna need taken by their back leg. And we're taking both legs, it's one loop, but we're taking both here. And it's gonna be like that. Next one. So we'll do the same. And this is how they hide. And we can continue with our pattern. So we're done with our short rows, that's how it looks right now. And let's make another row on the wrong side of the work, just to even out everything what we have here and get rid of these bumpy loops on the other side. So no increases in this row because it's a back side. And now I have five bumpy loops, which I'm gonna need taken by the front two legs. Just to remind you that it's our turning point. This is still one loop, it just looks like it's two loops. And it's five loops. Now we can continue our usual way. That's what I have with all my short uh, rows done. I'm gonna continue growing my reglan lines and my uh, sleeves gonna get bigger back as well. And I'm gonna be growing it till I reach the underarm. I'm gonna let you know how many rows uh, I'm gonna need. So if you have the same yarn and you need it with the same uh, size of needle, you can just easily copy. Now I have 17 loops on each sleeve. 
and I have uh, 40 loops on my back. In the front as well, I have 17 loops. To start my sleeve, I need 17 loops exactly to start my pattern. This is my pattern for the sleeve and now I can start it. You can continue just using this pattern, garter stitch or any other ones that you're using, it doesn't matter. Uh, for the concept, it's gonna be the same. So you're just gonna adjust it for your pattern. You can use it for just sleeves so, or for the back, for the front, it's all up to you. Also, if you wish, you can use different pattern on this strap as well. I finished knitting all my parts together and it's time to separate them and the knit separately to sleeves and together front and back. And the length of my reglan line in the front is 23 centimeters. That is exactly what I need for my size. I'm gonna leave information how you can find out what length of your reglan line should be for your size. And if you talk about the number of rows, so I need 60 rows and I started uh, counting from the short rows that we did for our neckline and shoulders and for the better fit i'm gonna cast on additional loops for the underarm lines on both sides i will need to gather my front and back and i will need separately my sleeves both of them and i will need them in rounds as well so there is not gonna be any seams and i'm not gonna make any seams on my front and back like on the sides because i'm gonna be knitting them together and the same I'm gonna do with my sleeves. I want my sleeves to be a little oversized because of the pattern that I have. I'm done with increases for my reglan lines as well. One loop from uh, reglan line I'm gonna go to the front on both sides and another loop gonna go for the sleeves. I'm gonna do the same for the back. So one loop for reglan line gonna go to the back and another one gonna go to the other side of the sleeve. So now I have to find out how many loops I have to cast on for my underarms for the better fit. There is a rule that says to add 8% uh, from the loops that you have in front and in back. For that, I counted my loops that I have. So I have 16 loops uh, in my strap and 32 loops in a side and front, so in each side. And in the back, I have 102 loops. So overall, it's gonna come to 192 and 8% from this amount, it's gonna be 15.8. So I have to cast on 15.8 loops for each side and because I can't actually divide 15.8 so I'm gonna round it up to 16 for each underarm it's gonna come to 8 so for each underarm I'm gonna cast on 8 loops my next row I'm gonna start at the right side of the work where I have my yarn here I'm gonna go from the front and I'm gonna go to the back so I'm gonna be knitting them together but before that I'm gonna divide my reglan line so I have two loops here one loop gonna go to the front and another one I will leave for the sleeve loops that I have for my sleeve I'm gonna cast off using additional piece of a yarn in contrast color the other things that you can do, you can just place them on the same uh, yarn, just additional piece of yarn, the way they are, so they'll stay flexible. With casting off method, they will stay flexible as well. After that, I'm gonna cast on eight additional loops for my underarms, and I will continue knitting my back. I will do the same for the other sleeves that I have, and I will finish my knitting here at the front. I knitted my row following the pattern, to my reglan line and I want this loop uh, to be in the front and uh, I want it to be the same pattern that I have here so it's gonna be garter stitch with uh, twisted loops so in that case I'm just gonna twist this loop and I will knit it in garter stitch that loop gonna go in front and I'm gonna follow the loops that I have to add and I'm gonna knit then my back and I'm gonna leave it aside now Next, I'm gonna cast off the loop for the sleeve. I will need a piece of yarn in contrast color, about the same thickness that I have uh, for, the, for my main yarn. So I'm gonna take my additional yarn and I'm gonna simply just cast off it. It doesn't matter what uh, type of casting off you'll use. We are doing it only temporarily. I 
and I'm gonna continue till the end of my sleep. I finished casting off loop for my sleeve. I'm gonna leave them like that for now and I'm gonna get back to my front where I started my roll. Here uh, I have to add eight loops for my underarm and I'm gonna do it the simplest way. I'm just gonna form a loop right that, like that and I'm gonna place it on my working needle. So it was one. And now I have eight additional loops on my working needle. With additional loops for my underarm, I will continue knitting my back. I have here as well one loop from my rear reglan line. And I'm gonna turn it back because I want it to look like the other pattern. I will continue with this pattern until I'm gonna reach the sleeve. For the other sleeve, I'm gonna cast off all the loops that I have using additional yarn as well. And once I done casting off loops of the sleeve, I can go back to my knitting. This is the back. I can add eight loops for the underarm. I will do it the same way as I did on the other one. I can continue with the other side of my front. I'm gonna switch my loop as well, so it's gonna look like my main pattern. And I'm gonna continue till the end. In the next row, I'm gonna show you how to knit these loops for the underarm that we just cast on. So now I am about to knit this extra loop that I have for my underarm, that is the loop that we cast on in previous round. And I see that there is lack of tension here. So if I'm gonna leave it like that, later we might have a hole between here. So I need to fix it now. What I'm gonna do, I'm just gonna take this extra yarn, I'm gonna add it to my left needle, and I will need the extra yarn. This is extra loop that we just did with the next loop. That's what we get. We needed those uh, two loops together. And other loops that I have here, I'm gonna twist before knitting them. So I'm gonna take this loop. I'm gonna twist it. And then I'm gonna knit it. I'm gonna do the same with other ones. As you can see, we added extra tension here in this place and there is no holes now. Let's take a look at the front. And I'm gonna do the same for the other underarm as well. But for now, I'm gonna continue with my pattern at the back. And for this underarm, I'm gonna do the same. So I'm just gonna pick up this extra yarn that I have here and I'm gonna place it this way. And I will need this extra yarn, extra loop, with the first loop that I have on my left needle. Like that. And for the next loop, I'm gonna twist it before knitting it. So I'm gonna pick up this loop, I will twist it, and after that I'm gonna knit it. And I'm going to do the same for all the extra loops that we picked up. So we added extra tension, that's what we have on the wrong side of the work. And that's what we have on the right side, so it's going to be really easy to pick up these loops here. Now I'm going to continue with the rest of the row, and I will continue knitting with the same pattern, my front and back together, till I reach the length I need for my cardigan.
I finished the lens for my cardigan and now I am just need to cast off. I don't need my end to be stretchy, so that's why I am going to use the simplest way of casting off. In the beginning of casting off, I am going to need my first loop as well, just to form a nice edge. And I am going to need the second loop. I am going to bring it back on my left needle, both loops, and I am going to pull the second loop through the first one. And now I'm going to twist my loop just to form a nice uh, end as well. And I'm going to repeat with all my loops like that. So knitting one, bringing them back on the left needle and pulling the second loop through the first and twisting the second loop. And again. That's the edge that we have and we have a nice corner here and this is our front. I'm gonna continue in the same way casting off all loops. And I finished with my casting off. That's how it looks now. I already needed one sleeve. And that how it looks the place where I picked up my loops. And that is inside. After I picked up the loops here for under the arm for the better fit, I started making decreases, just slight decreases here. And uh, I made one decrease in every six row. And starting from this point, I didn't make any decreases until the very last row in my pattern, in my strawberry pattern here. I made again decreases here and started making garter stitch pattern. It was garter stitch a little different than the one we did for our main. Part. Because in one row I was knitting loops, in the other one I was purling them. I also bind off in elastic way. I use different casting off methods than the ones that I use for my main part. And it gives me some stretch here. Only one thing that I have to do is just to, to hide this tail. And you can see here where I started my rows. For the length of my sleeve, I made nine rows with little strawberries, as you can see here. And I made seven decreases right in the middle. And I was decreasing two loops at once. You can see where I made those decreases, but because it's right in the middle, it didn't ruin my overall look and that's exactly how I want it to be. I wanted my sleeve to be loose and I didn't want to have a pattern here, a little strawberries, because when I'm going to be moving my arm, I thought that it's going to be not really comfortable for me, so that's why I just stick uh, to this pattern, not to the strawberries. And we'll continue with knitting the other sleeve. First I have to pick up all the loops that I have here that they cast off using their contrast uh, yarn. And then I'm gonna pick up eight loops that I have here on this side in underarm. And I have to take care of this part just to pick up some loops. So it's not gonna create any holes here on the both sides. To knit my sleeves, I'm gonna use shorter cord. It's actually really comfortable to knit sleeves and hats using this cord. To pick up the loops right here, I'm gonna use a hook marker. Uh, just to mark the middle. I'm going to pick up my loops very carefully, so I'm not going to lose any loops. I picked up all the loops for my sleeve and I have them on my circular needle with short cord. Also, I placed my marker right in the middle of my knitting. It's going to be the middle of my sleeve as well. For my underarm, 
I picked up eight loops. So my meal right now, it's four loops on one side and four on the other one. And you can see those loops clearly right here that I will be picking up. There is some extra space created right here. And if I'm not gonna do anything, I will make a hole here. So I have to pick up extra loops on this side as well. And later in my next row, I will be decreasing them. One loop on each side, it's gonna be one loop that I have right in the corner. I'm gonna use additional uh, yarn to pick it up along with these four loops right in this part that I'm going to be decreasing. Next two loops I have to find from the yarn that I already have here. This yarn looks really loose, but if I'm going to use it as additional loop, I'm going to make a hole here. So I have to go to another row and pick up this yarn. And as you can see, I have the yarn here. It was the first row, the first yarn that I decided not to pick up. But this yarn goes on this side as well. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to use my hook. I will pick up the same, the same yarn. And I'm going to pick up this loop. And I will decrease it. There is two extra loops that I picked up. Let's take a look on the other side. On the other side, you can see that we have a loose yarn here as well. And this yarn goes right here. I'm not picking up first loop here. I will pick up it on this part. So I'm going to go lower one row and I will pick up this one as my first loop. And that's going to be the second one. And that is loop that I picked up. So now I have two extra loops on each side that I'm going to be decreasing. I'm going to take a new ball of yarn. I'm going to leave some tail so I can hide it in on my wrong side of the work. And I'm going to make one loop using the hook. So slip knot and a loop. That's going to be my first loop. Now I'm going to find the first loop that I'm going to be picking up. And I'm going to include it in my knitting. So that's going to be my first loop. As you can see on the edge, we have here two pieces of yarn and they form a V here. And this is other one, form the V as well. And this is our loop. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to grab one piece of this V, one piece of this yarn, and I'm going to go right on the other side, on the other V, like that. And now I'm gonna take my loop and I'm just gonna pull it through that space. That's exactly where I formed my loop. It looks like we continue knitting this part. Now I'm gonna place this loop on my right needle. And I'm going to be starting my rows all the time right in the middle here. With the next loop, I'm going to do the same. So you see one V here and another one. I'm going to take one part of the V and I'm going to go in the middle of the other one. I'm going to grab a yarn. And pull it through its space. Now I can just place it on my working needle and tie it. That is the second loop that I picked up. So I'm gonna go right in this part, other one, and tie it. And I have three loops now. So fourth loop.
So I have four loops, which I'm going to include in my sleeve. I will be knitting them all along. Now I have to pick up loop number five that I'm going to be decreasing in my next row. That's going to be the place where I'm going to pick it up. So again, I'm going to go right here. I'm going to grab this yarn and I'm going to go right in the middle here. Grab a yarn. I'm going to pick it up. My decreases I'm going to be doing according to the pattern. So I'm going to be purling while I decrease. And before I do that, I have to make sure that my loops placed close one to another. So when I'm going to make uh, decreases, it's going to be not noticeable. I see that this uh, loop is very loose. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to twist it. So I will place it like that. And temporarily I'm just going to take it on my working needle and I'm going to take a look at my other loop. It also looks loose. I'm going to twist it as well, like that. And I'm going to return this extra loop on my left needle. And I see what I'm, when I'm going to need them, when I'm going to purl them, they're going to be really close here. And this gap that I have, it's going to be closed. So that's going to be my first decrease, which I'm going to purl two loops together. And that's how it's going to look. In my next row, I'm going to decrease these loops here these two loops. And for now, I'm just going to be knitting according to the pattern. So I'm going to be purling and following the pattern here. I'm going to be knitting only these loops. So as you can see, we made a decrease here. I also closed the gap that I have here. So now I'm at the other side of the sleeve and I have to decrease those two loops now. And I see that they also look loose. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to twist one of them like that. I'm just going to place temporarily it on my working needle and I'm going to twist another one. Okay, I'm going to bring back this loop. And now I'm going to purl them together. By twisting the loops, I created extra tension. And as you can see, it's not noticeable that we made a decrease and there were extra room. And now I have to pick up those four loops. One, two, three, and four. So for this one, it might be a little tricky here. And I need to go right in the middle here in this space. And that is my first loop. So now I have two extra loops on each side of the sleeve that I have to decrease in the next row. And this is going to be row number two. I'm going to be decreasing them by knitting three loops together. These three loops together. So I'm going to knit four loops first and then I'm going to make one decrease by knitting three loops together. My marker here indicates uh, the middle of my knitting. I'm just going to remove it temporarily. And first I'm going to knit three loops. I'm going to work three loops and I'm going to purl them because that's what my pattern tells me to do. 
I'm also switching them a little, just placing them as they're supposed to be according to the pattern. So I'm going to place back my marker here so I know where is my middle. And I'm going to continue with my loop number four. This is loops that I'm going to include in my knitting. This is four loops. And now I have to knit three loops together. But before that, I have to place them as close as possible one to another. So this loop, I'm just going to twist it like that. So it's going to be close. I'm going to take a look at this one. And I'm going to place it as well. I'm just going to switch it so it's going to be close to another one. And this one as well. I'm just going to switch it so when I'm going to pull them, it's going to be less noticeable. So now I'm going to purl all these three loops together like that. And by knitting all these three loops together, I just created extra tension. I'm going to tie it a little bit like that. And there is no any holes. And now I have the needed amount of loops that I'm going to continue knitting for my sleeve. And now I'm going to continue with all my loops that I have here till my next point right here. And when I'm knitting in circles, I'm going to make sure that my loops not twisted. So I'm going to be placing them one by one as they're supposed to be. Cool. As you can see here, so this loops needs to be placed like that. So I'm going to be purling it and it's not going to be twisted in my pattern. And I'm going to continue working my pattern. So I will be purling where I supposed to purl and I'm going to be knitting where I have to knit. So now I'm on the other side of my sleeve. I have four loops that I'm going to carry on with my knitting, two extra loops that I have to decrease and one loop from the sleeve with which I'm going to knit these two. So first, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to make sure is that my loops are placed together one to another. So when I'm going to knit them, they're going to look like one loop. So those two together. And just to make sure that it's going to be tight and it's going to look like I'm knitting this one loop, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take these two loops I'm going to grab my hook and I'm going to take this third loop. You can use for that additional needle as well. I'm going to bring back those two loops. I'm going to take the one from my hook. And I'm just going to place it like that. In that way, I'm going to create extra tension and also I'm going to hide that third loop besides the one that look like pearls. And when I'm going to pearl them all three loops together, all these three loops together, it's going to look like I'm knitting, I'm purling only one loop from my sleeve part of the loops. So now I can just Pearl them all three together. And it looks like I continue knitting the loops from my sleeve part. And I will carry on with my pattern. And that's how it looks now. So I finished my second row and I completed all decreases that I have to do. And now for next four rows, I have to follow a pattern. And I have to purl where pattern tells me to purl. And I'm going to knit where it tells me to knit. When I reach my sixth row, I'm going to make my first decrease right here, right in the middle. And for now, I'm going to carry on with my pattern. Just making sure I'm untwisting my loops. I'm also going to leave my marker just to make sure I'm not going to lose my needle. 
I needed five rows and in a row number six I'm gonna make a first decrease and I'm gonna be decreasing two loops besides my marker. I'm just gonna take this one loop temporarily on my working needle. I'm gonna remove my marker and what I need to do, I just need to place those two loops the way that it's gonna, they're gonna be really close one to another. So like that. So this loop is twisted. Looks like that. And this loop sits exactly as I supposed to have it to purl it. In this way, when I'm gonna purl my two loops together, it will look like I needed just one loop. It was my first decrease. I decreased only one loop. And this loop right now, it's gonna be in the middle. And in every six row, I'm gonna be decreasing now two loops. So I'm gonna be knitting together three loops. Also, you can see how nice our underarm line looks like. And you can't even tell where we picked up our loops. And that's how it looks on the wrong side. What we need to do, just hide this tail. So I placed my marker back just be besides my decrease, which was right here. And I will continue with my row number six, according to the pattern. And next five rows, I'm gonna follow the pattern as well. In, in the row number six, I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna be making a decreasers and how I'm gonna be knitting three loops together. I'm going to be knitting these three loops together. And in that way, all decreases are going to be right in the middle. And just to help me keep up with rows uh, where I have to make decreases, I'm using a pen and a piece of paper. Uh, when after each row, I'm marking it and I'm marking in different color the row where I made a decrease. I finished five rows and now I have three middle loops here next and I have to make a decrease. So I'm just temporarily place those loops on my working needle just to remove a marker. And now I have to place those loops exactly as I want them to for my decrease. So this loop I'm gonna place like that. And other ones I have to make the way so that's gonna they gonna be really close one to another. this loop I'm just gonna switch like that so this loop is as I would need it and those two uh, they are the same way as I would uh, just purl them so I play them like that and I'm gonna purl them all three together. And I'm gonna place my marker back. So that was my first decrease of two loops together, so knitting three loops together, and I have to make seven decreases overall in my sleeve. If I'm gonna count this one as one done, I have to make six more, and I'm gonna be doing that every six row. I finished knitting the length of the sleeve. I made all decreases as well. You can see my decreases right here. In my next row, I'm gonna make decreases. Uh, so I have at the end 48 loops. This is gonna be my last row in the pattern that I'm making, strawberry pattern. So I'm just gonna finish my little strawberries here. That's how I'm gonna make decreases. Also, I'm gonna need these two loops together and on the other side as well. That's where I'm gonna be making my decreases. If you're familiar with strawberry pattern, you know what I'm talking about, but I'm gonna show you just in one second what I mean. So this is the beginning of my knitting. This is a middle. You can see here that it's exactly the middle of my knitting, of my sleeve. That's where I'm gonna start knitting and I'm gonna knit five loops together this time. I'm not gonna purl all my loops here, I'm gonna be knitting them. So that's gonna be my last uh, row in this pattern. I'm gonna be making little strawberries right here. 
if you're familiar with the pattern that I'm knitting. I'm also gonna leave a link where you can find uh, how to knit this pattern. Also, I'm gonna be knitting these two loops together as well, and that one too on the other side. And I'm gonna continue just knitting all the loops that I have here. And I'm gonna be knitting, making decreasers and knitting just one loop as well. Not purling, but knitting. I'm gonna do that because I'm gonna continue making garter stitch pattern here. And that's the best way just to make uh, this the last row in my main pattern on the sleeve. So after that, I'm gonna be making garter stitch pattern. I have here 20 rows and one row that I'm gonna be casting off my loops. I'm also continuing knitting in circles. And because it's a garter stitch pattern, you have to switch rows. So one row I'm gonna be knitting, another one purling. And that's why, because you switch in the rows and knitting in circles, you'll see a little row here. So that's exactly where our switch in the rows happening. Let's continue with this pattern. First, I'm gonna knit five loops together. That's how I'm gonna be making my first decrease. Next loop, I'm gonna be knitting as well, and I'm gonna be knitting two loops together. And I'm gonna be knitting them with a little twist. So I'm taking them from the back uh, side of the loop. Next loop as well, I'm gonna be knitting, taking the back side of the loop, back leg. So I'm gonna be twisting my loops. Next two loops, I'm gonna be also twisting. And because I need to twist them, I'm gonna switch position of the loops. Place them like that and knit them together. And I will continue with the same uh, order that I just showed you. I'm gonna be knitting five loops together, two loops together, one, again two, and I will repeat. And in that case, uh, it's gonna be 48 loops on my needles left. I'm done with all decreases in my previous row and I switched my short cord to a slightly longer one so I can place my loops like that. So it helps me to navigate through this small amount of uh, loops. The first row that I'm gonna need, it's gonna be all pearls and I have to make sure that uh, my loops are twisted because my main pattern is guard stitch pattern with twisted loops. First row, I'm gonna purl and the second, I'm gonna knit. I'm gonna make sure that all the loops that I have, they're gonna be twisted. So in that case, I will have guard stitch pattern with twisted loops. I will continue with this pattern until I have 20 rows in a garter stitch pattern with twisted loops. And for this loop, because it was our big decrease, five loops, I'm gonna twist it one more time. Like that. Just to create that extra tension. continue with this row. In the knit rows I'm gonna be twisting my loops as well in the same way. So I'm gonna be taking them from behind, placing them like that on the left needle and knitting them by the back leg. And it doesn't matter if I knit or purl, I always have my twisted loops and it's gonna be effect of the regular garter stitch pattern. And I'm gonna continue. So overall I have uh, to knit 20 rows in a garter stitch pattern. In row 3 I'm gonna be twisting my loops in that way. So I'm taking that loop, twisting that, and purl. And as you can see all my loops are twisted here. 
I finished knitting my sleeve. The last row I did was knit stitch and now I'm gonna be casting off my loops. First I'm gonna make yarn over clockwise and I'm gonna knit my first loop taken in by the front leg. Then I'm gonna bring back this loop and the one that I just, just did yarn over and I'm gonna pull second loop through the first. I'm gonna bring back that loop. I'm gonna take that loop again yarn over and I'm gonna knit the next loop taking it by the front leg. I'm gonna bring back on the left needle three loops and I'm gonna pull third loop through the first two. Yarn over, knitting the next loop, taking it by the front leg, bringing back all three loops and pulling third loop through the first two. And I'm gonna continue until I reach the last loop. I have one loop left and now I can just pull the yarn. And I'm gonna join my row, my casting off row. And that's how we joined our casting off row. Now I need just to hide this sail inside my sleeve. That's how my sleeves look like. All tails are hidden on the wrong side of the work and we just need to wash and dry our cardigan.